hello. We are <laughs> finally live. I started doing my big wave before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know how I am. I'm either late or early. You know how that goes. So, hi. We're so happy to see you all today. Uh, <laughs> you may notice that we have a slightly smaller group than usual today, although we still have the core. Uh, and... Um, <laughs> So yeah, let's just do quick introductions and say hey to everybody, and then we'll say hey to our chatters, and we'll talk about what we're going to talk about today, which is kind of exciting news. Story Detective, welcome to the whatever we're doing today. Live <laughs> I don't know. It's a bad day already. Um, so yeah, so hi, welcome. We all know you, but tell us about your channel and who you are for anybody who happens to be new today. Well, I'm glad to be here doing this, whatever it is we're doing. And <laughs> <laughs> we my, never know. <laughs> my channel is the Story Detective, where we take all forms of story, break it down, and look at the craft, examine it under a Sherlockian microscope, and give it to the viewers to make their craft journey a little easier. I like tech reviews. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and he juggles for I I'm kidding. Do you juggle? <laughs> I just pulled that out from, you know, the dark. <laughs> I can see you juggling. I know I can kind of see him juggling too. Like he has some <laughs> what's your what's your weirdest secret talent? Weirdest secret talent? All right, you think about you think about that while I go I let Michelle do her intro and then I'm gonna come right back to you. So be plotting and then Michelle I'll come to you right after Robert tells us about his secret talent, and then I'll tell you guys about mine. All right. All right. Michelle Schusterman. Hi. Welcome, <laughs> darling. Tell us all about you and your awesome channel. Thank you. I'm Michelle Schusterman. I'm a young adult and middle grade author. And my channel is traditional publishing chat and writing workshops and writing vlogs. And I don't know if I have a secret talent, but one that people in my writer life don't tend to know about and tend to be surprised about is that I played the steel drums. I haven't in a while, but I know I totally remember. I was obsessed, like obsessed all through college. I was in a band after college and through most of my twenties and thirties and yeah. <laughs> I, okay, so I am completely shocked by that and not surprised at all at the same time. But just in case we thought Michelle could not get any cooler, <laughs> no. steel drum, and not just that, like played in a, in a band. Oh, that, yeah. That's so <laughs> Mini awesome. bands. I love that. I super love that. All right, Robert, now you have to, can you, can you, uh, can you compete There's with that? There's, yeah, there's a lot of them, but I guess um, going off of what Michelle said, I play the guitar. I don't hey. play, play. I play by ear, but like most things in my life, I can figure it out and hear the music. And I also compose some of my own. And at one point, actually yeah. wanted to put out an album that was sort of like a theme album in music, telling kind of a story. <gasps> um, I... One day that'll happen. I okay, but that combines like all sorts of elements of Robert. One, you have like a really great voice, like for storytelling. Two, you're a storyteller. You're a writer. I can completely see that happen happening. Also, that does surprise me. All right, here we go. I'll go next. Ready? I uh, okay. About me. Hi, everybody. Lisa <laughs> Daly here. I'm a traditionally published author of. Uh, rom rom coms romantic comedies and non-fiction dating advice and uh on my channel we talk about how to write a book you're proud of and get it published okay ready secret talent i uh can walk a high wire what <laughs> okay that that's the most shocking of the day you win <laughs> that, that's okay. amazing <laughs> it's pretty cool so uh in sarasota uh where we lived for many years uh there is a big circus community and um uh, because uh, ringling was based there for a really long time maybe forever and um and so quick story way back in the day uh the one of the sarasota high schools brought in circus performers to help their gymnastic team and then it became this separate thing called the sailor circus which sailor was the name of the high school's team and so from the time of like i want to say it was like in the 40s when they established this that would be about right 40s or 50s 
uh, there was this program for kids to do the circus. I did not do that, but my daughter did. But I did a fundraiser where uh, they um, asked me if I would learn how to walk the high wire. So I walked a real high wire, like way up there in the sky. I practiced for months and months and months. And I until like until we moved, I had a, a low wire in my backyard to practice on, which is like oh, wow. insanely good core work. Yeah. yeah. And I, I performed in front of a crowd of 250 people. Holy crap. Walking, walking on the high wire. If I can find a picture, I'll pop it up. But yeah. Please, yeah so that's, please that's, my special, sure. that's my special skill. I'll see if I can. That's I don't know crazy. I know. It's kind of weird. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Let's, let's say hello to, I know enough weird stuff. Let's say <laughs> hello to our, uh, our pan, our panel, Ooh. our chatters today. It's because I did that game show. So now I'm Mary. like. Great. I'm like, let's say hello to our panelists. Uh, hi, Mary. We're super glad you're here today. You are the first one here. Congratulations. Very nice to see you. Claude is here. Hello, Claude. Hi, Claude. We're so glad to see you. There we go. Amy is here. <laughs> Third. Yes, you made it. Absolutely. She says hello to everybody. Stephen Whelan. Hello, darling. We're very glad to see you. Laura's here. JC is here. Good morning to you. Oh my gosh, we got a really nice crowd. Look who it is that just popped into the stream. It's Doll <laughs> Cecil Runo, our very favorite alien. Hello. Hey, it's good Yay. to see you. Sorry We're for so being late again. You're fine. You know, we're, we're cash around here. We're cool. Don't you worry about that. Yeah, laptop having technical difficulties, but happy to be here, everyone. Good to see you. We all understand that. Uh, Sky is here. Hey, Sky. We're glad to see you. Oh, I love your... Um, I love your avatar. I think you had that last time. This is this looks to me like a Mad Raptor avatar. Mm. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, Laura, what are you working on today? You, uh, Laura is editing my micro horror stories while waiting on renders for work. Very mm. good job. Devin Cutting, hello. I'm so glad to see you today. We haven't seen you in a little while. I'm very glad to see you back. So Mary says, have to make a quick coffee, energy, drink, run, be back in a few, leaving the stream. Up so you don't lose views. Aw, you're so sweet. That's so nice. Claude wants to warn you not to juggle with lightsabers, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is good advice from Claude. I really do. All right. See how Savvy's here today. Hi. She's, 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 she says, hi, Daily Detective Batsis Schusterman. Missed a video from Michelle <laughs> on Monday. I was just hearing mm -hmm. from Robert that it is a great one. I have not seen it yet either, but I am going to. I always have so much to catch up on like by Monday because I don't watch... Like I used to watch a lot more YouTube on the weekends and I just have not been late. Yeah. All right, Jay, she said, uh, <laughs> I have to walk a high wire. She says, if it's not a big deal. Uh, it's, it's less a of a big deal. Big, it, it's, thank you. It's less of a big deal in Sarasota. Um, <laughs> but it is because you have, like I said, you have this big community of like former circus people mm -hmm. there and it's kind of cool. But my, my daughter um, did Sailor Circus for, for a long time and they start these kids in like fourth grade and they are like, they can like juggle fire. They walk the high wire. They're on the trip. Like it's a regular circus show with a giant arena that holds thousands of people. Wow. It's insane. The first time. Wow. One of one of my neighbor's uh, daughters was doing it before we had any exposure to it, and she asked us to come. And I'm thinking we're going to come, like, go see her daughter's like that little ballet recital. And I go in there, and I'm like shocked. You know, you have like these fifth graders juggling fire, and oh my gosh. people on unicycles, and they're doing all this. I mean, it's insane. If you That's ever go so to cool. Sarasota. Sailor Circus, don't want to miss it. All right, I did, this is my um, morning, Adiga. Yeah, my my uh, little thing today for Sarasota. There we go. My public service announcement. Adiga Outlaw, hello. Hi. We're so glad to see you. I have a quick plug for Adiga, if Ooh. you if you don't mind. I love um, it. He has been working on scripts for a very very big YouTube channel. It's called Top Fives. So nice. if you're curious about spooky and paranormal and mysterious things, Adega is collaborating with Top Fives on YouTube. 
you can check it out. Check out his social media to find those things. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm writing this down. A Dega Outlaw. I will definitely check that out and send the horror geek over there too. Good job. Very nice. Theo Savvy says, Hola, Delcito. Hola. Uh, it's good to hola. see you. Laura Nettles wonders if there's too much alliteration in this story. Oop, here, we're going to get a little taste. The sliver of silver light slices through the opening of the defiled sarcophagus, showing nothing but ragged remains. Robert should be Ooh. reading this. Mm. The midnight moon illuminating where the mummy's head should be. There is a lot of alliteration in there. I don't know if I would have noticed it if you hadn't pointed it out. I, I noticed it because of the sounds. Right. Well, that's what I'm wondering, yeah. No, but, but the thing is, alliteration is a, is a form of poetry. It is used in poetry. I don't know if, if that's a problem. I mean, if it is a stylistic choice. It is. Is it yeah. part of, is, if, it's, if it belongs to the character voice or your regular author voice, either or, if it's something that you do because it belongs to your style, keep it if you feel it's kind of alien to your usual maybe work on the wording you know yeah it, it's up to you but it's very subjective i think it can uh, be used to good effect but yeah in my mind when you're going to do the um the alliteration it's like building up to that so you have a rhythm to end a paragraph or a sentence that kind of sticks catchy in the reader's mind rather mm -hmm. than scatters mm -hmm. out it's but that's just me Thoughts, Michelle, you're making that face. I, I'm sorry, my, my, I think my audio just kind of went out for a second, so I'm missing something. Okay, here's the first part. Oh, oh. Sorry, yeah, let me take my headphones out. Okay. I do think that when we put Laura, okay, I do think when we put Laura's work up on the screen that we should have Robert read it, because he really is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, crazy oh, robot Laura, voice. I remember you talking. Crazy robot voice. Is me? Yes. Yes. Is it bad? Yes. Yes. Okay. Headphones go back in. Better? Okay, how's this? <laughs> oh, it's still like this little chick 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 chick. Any better? No. Why no. don't you can you pop out and pop back in? Refresh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, <laughs> hey, Michelle. There we go. Oh my God. Co Savvy says, Lisa, next time you stress about goofing up on your live stream, remember you can walk a high wire. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? There you go. Oh, Doll uh, Adega says, You're kind, Doll. Which is for very, sure. Very true. Eva says, Good morning. And she loves the prose, Laura. I have to agree with uh, Laura or with Eva on that. I really I think it's quite beautiful. Devin Cutting, hello. Gremlins, always true. I, uh, CO loves the alliteration since it's an S sound, which is more soothing than a harsh letter like a K. Fun fact, villains sometimes have names that end in K or T, which make them sound meaner. You know what? I knew that intellectually, but I never put it together until right this very second. Like I knew- I have, I have a villain with soft and harsh um, consonants. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you don't really know what First, if he is really the bad guy or just a strict parent or 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 but as the story progresses and you get to know the meaning of his name it's like ooh, yeah yeah rough. <laughs> all right we're gonna have to do the test here see you uh michelle yes hi yay okay <laughs> okay perfect perfect it works Robert was nodding. So CO Savvy gave us a little clue that villains sometimes have names that end in K or T, which makes them sound meaner, which makes perfect sense. And Robert already knew this, I believe, because you were nodding along as I was reading it. Well, it's any great tip. The villain. Yeah, it really is a great tip. That was awesome, CO. Thank you so much. And Amy was like, yep, I knew I smelled some gremlins. So yes. uh, you guys in the chat, let us know what you're working on today. Uh, let's go around the other way. Michelle, what are you going to be working on today? Um, so today I actually, yesterday I filmed a new course that I'm going to put up on Skillshare. And today I have so much editing to do. 
<laughs> it's a long one and I have to create all of the like overlays that, you know, with all the stuff that goes with yes. the lesson and it's going to take a while. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do it all today, but I'm going to get through as much as I can. For forever. So yes. can you give us a little hint about what the course is about? Oh, yeah. Because it's going to oh, be I awesome, can do I'm sure. That. It's oh, going to be about writing a, a book description that you can use for jacket flap copy or query letter or anything like that. I had a video last year about the query formula that I use. Mm -hmm. And so I, I take that, but like each bracket in the formula gets its own lesson. So we like really dig deep into, and yeah. I, I found a bunch of great book descriptions, just browsing Goodreads and looking for books that are coming out this year and like picked apart what made them really stand out and what made them oh. special. It is fun to work on. <laughs> that is good. That is a really great topic too. Like that's so specific, but it really, um, it's something that so many people struggle with. In fact, I think yeah. we talked about how we did. Like, yeah. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. I think you did mention that you were working on something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So I, I love writing descriptions. <laughs> <laughs> I know I do too. Well, we talked about that too. I do yeah. too. I'm ex I'm really excited though. I think that's going to be really awesome. All right. So Claude is going to be is planning the last third of my fun and game section, hopefully writing it soon. Nice. Donald, what are you working on today? I am outlining a, a video series right. for my YouTube channel. Um, nice. It is going to be all about Instagram for authors, but yeah, I know YouTube has a bunch of videos about Instagram, how to do Instagram, how to do this, how to do that. Oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. I love no, dogs. we yeah, we love the dogs. Yeah. We, don't no, worry. We, we love you, Rosa. You are the best. Um, so everybody talks about like how to do hashtags and how to do this, how to do that. But there is nothing at all on Instagram is super visual. So uh -huh. how do you define yourself as an author on a visual platform and all about branding and color choices and like why would you do what you do on Instagram as an author uh -huh. based on your genre, all the psychology of your brand on Instagram and your profile optimiz optimization? Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing the whole shit. Look at you. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Star D, what are you working on, May? <clears throat> well, I'm not officially getting into the next draft of my story yet, because I have some other things to do, but I was playing around with some of the writing software and I figured I would start looking at the first couple of pages. And um, I had a couple of ideas for beginnings that I wanted to play around with write a couple oh. of variations of it and see what works best. So not so much word count today, but ideas pumping. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I, it always takes me, well, I shouldn't say always. Sometimes the beginning of the book just like comes to me in one like blah and like, and it's exactly the way I want it. And some of them, you just have to work it and work it and work it and work it until you find something that you really love. Mm -hmm. So very cool. I will be, I'm actually making website notes today because Ooh. my goal was to make notes for Amy, uh, to finish making my notes for Amy on Monday and I ran out of day. And so I'm going to try to finish them today. We will see. The fact that it's taking me so long is not, uh, is not indicative, Amy, of that I have a lot of stuff to say. It's that I'm trying to figure out like, what is that I want with this? What is I don't want like that? So um, it's more thinking, I think is the deal. All right, JC, working on outline for my mystery book, hoping to start the novel for July's Camp NaNoWriMo. That is coming up soon, guys, less than a month away. Good gracious. And CO Savvy says, Rosa! because everybody loves Rosa. So, all right, you guys, let's get started with a five minute warm up. We are gonna try and get a proper number of um, sprints in today. We are sort of slackers last time. Uh, so, <laughs> so two things, one, after the five minute sprint, we have an announcement to make, which I'm kind of excited about. It's gonna be cool. And mm -hmm. second, uh, we are going to get those sprints in today. Prepare to work, people. Announcement. Yeah. Ooh, I'm excited because I, I was late. I know. Well, uh, I think you already know about it. I'm pretty sure you already know about it. All right. So let me pull up our five-minute sprinting timer. 
Hold on, here we go. Oh, look, it's going right away <laughs> without me. Uh, all right, everybody, I hope you are ready to do a five minute. Get your document open, get your drink or your snack, and uh, and let's do a quick five minute warm up, then we'll come back, chat a little bit of time, and then we're gonna do some 20s. All right, everybody, here we go in three, two, one.
All right. Very nice. All right. Very nice. Oops. Somebody's got the channel up. Oops. Somebody's got the channel up. With the volume on. Okay. With good. the volume on. Hold on. Is it? No. Is it you, Robert? No. Is it you, Robert? No. I don't have the channel open, but last time it was me, so should I <laughs> log out and try again? I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Think. I don't hear it, so. Michelle, I, are you wearing your headphones? I don't have YouTube open. Michelle, are you wearing your headphones? No. But. <laughs> All right, gr we have some serious gremlins today. Hold on. All the right. gremlins are killing Michelle. Please save Michelle. Hashtag please save Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here she comes. She's back. Better. Oh, hold on. There we go. All right. Better? So it's there fine. I don't, I didn't have YouTube open. I don't understand. <laughs> It's That's because it's your speakers. When you're when you're not wearing headphones and you have the speakers loudly, it will come. It will make a feedback loop. Oh, Devin Ooh. says Lisa is multiplying daily double. <laughs> daily double. Nice. I love that. Okay. If I can. It's, give you a it wasn't me. I'm not cloning her. If I could give you a little trophy right now, I totally would. All right. We had some good. Uh, we had some very good comments so i'm going to do it sky is making book lists so when uh Ooh. they visit bookstores they don't purchase duplicate copies i think that is awesome amy says isn't there an app for that if there is amy will you stick it in the uh i'm sure there must be where you can just barcode um the horror geek has one for video games so i think you can just scan the barcode on the book and it probably makes a nice list for you i would love that all right, see how savvy says, kind of hard to beat that high wire announcement, but we'll see. It's not, I don't want to like make it like a thing, but it is a big announcement. All right, here we go. Uh, never tag you right the first time I try. JC says, I need to make one of those lists as well because I always have a hard time remembering what I do and don't have. I always have duplicates, always. Sometimes I have duplicates of things where I bought it originally on like kindle because i wanted it right away and then later i go oh this looks interesting and i buy it in paperback or hardcover or whatever jd marcella's here hello we're very glad you're here today especially co savvy she's like all right so that's cool very nice mary says back from the store jamie called so i'm on the phone with her still very very nice sky says probably can with goodreads i'm just using google google notes that way I have can have checklists. All right, checklists a magical thing. Oh my god, I sound I was channeling Caro just then. Magical thing. All right. So uh, we will come to more of the comments. But should we tell everybody what's happening next week? I feel like I've made it. I feel like we better tell them right away because I've made it in, seem like, guess what? We're giving everybody a million dollars. That's not it. We are switching. We are switching our streaming day next week to Woo. Monday. Woo, I know, that's exciting. We, you, As many of you know, Caro now has a, a day job. And we, since we started this stream with her, we wanted to find a way to make sure that she could continue on with us. So, right. I'm, I didn't know this, but I am so happy to hear that because i was like oh my god but caro is also streaming on wednesday i i suppose we're gonna figure it out yeah, yeah well she's streaming first thing in the morning before she goes to work but by the time our stream starts she's already gone like she's already mm -hmm. off to work so and i can't go she's already streaming earlier i can't go earlier so and i kind of want to keep to the same time so just after like messaging everybody like it seems like monday same time, 11 a.m. Eastern to 1 p.m. Eastern time. So this exact time slot, uh, we will be starting from Monday. Please tell me you guys can all be here. Eva says, Mondays work well for me after this week. Yay. I'm very glad to hear that. Nice. Jeannie Marcella, Mondays are so much better now. Aw, thank you. Very, very nice. All right, you guys, good job. I'm very glad. Everybody else, let us know. I, hopefully, Mondays works for everybody. It works it for is me. A good. Well, I think I knew that. Didn't you send me the message? 
No, it you, wasn't me. Oh, I thought you told me that um, I had I had I made a list for everybody to see if ever I think you told me any day was fine. Was that you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I okay. am. I think I have told you before that I'm perfectly yeah. fine. Whatever they. I yeah, will, I, I will just readjust this. Okay, label. I made a list so because I didn't want to. You know, I just didn't want to lose anybody. All right, let's say Lisa Hunger Grain strikes again. Michelle a survivor. Gremlins, Gremlins, Gremlins. Yeah. So Jeannie or Jeannie. So just Eva is up to three thousand five hundred fifty-six words today, flying Woo! through this garbage draft. Jeannie Marcel offers a correction, not garbage draft, <laughs> zero draft. Yay, yay, yay. I'm super excited. JC does what I do, gives duplicates to the library. CEO uh, says, great. Carol ends her streams a few minutes early so we can catch your stream. Monday, Mondays will work. Yay. Yeah, we all coordinated, but I'm very glad that you guys can all be here. Yay. All right. Oh, good. We're so glad, Claude. To do oh, no. Oh no. Oh, Ben. That sucks. No. All right. We I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and hope that it will work out. I'm sorry to hear that though. Hello Spence. Spence, we were just making the announcement in case you missed it. Hello back to you by the way. Hello, darling. Um we just made the announcement that we we're trying to coordinate with Caro and um and keep the stream kind of at the same time. Uh, but we are going to be switching to Monday starting next week. Oh, no, Stephen can't make it either. Well, Caro does. She is going to be streaming, I believe, on Wednesday mornings, continuing. That's my understanding, unless I've gotten it upside down. I yeah, think she's, she will be streaming on Mondays, but a little bit earlier than our stream. I think she's streaming on Wednesdays earlier than yes. our stream. Wednesdays. Yes. Yeah, yeah. An hour, yeah. an hour earlier or so, or like two hours earlier before your stream perfect so you guys can get a little taste of caro uh on wednesdays and i hope that you guys can all make it on mondays i'm very glad that many of you can i'm sorry for everybody who can't devin loves mondays awesome that is phenomenal so now that we've made our big exciting announcement i feel like we should celebrate by having a writing sprint yes <laughs> spence says oh yay i'm here for monday streams yay that is fantastic i think i will break tradition and actually try to get like the live stream up scheduled before you know before like five minutes beforehand so that you guys will remember um and so, you know, so these guys and I will all remember. Okay, cool. So I have the 20 minute uh, sprint ready to roll. Let me grab that really fast. There's the audio. There's that. Okay, here we go. This could work out really well. Doll, oh, it's going already. Doll, yeah. would you like to give us a little pep talk yeah. before our 20 minute sprint? Here we go. Sure. Okay, everyone. It is time for our first sprint. You know what to do. You put your fingers on the keyboard. You put your mind in the right place. And you know that you're not alone. That's why we're all here. We're working our magic. And get ready to start sprinting in three. Two, 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 two. One sprint.
All right. Okay, so hold on here. Let me get rid of this thing. There we go. All right. There we go. Good job, everybody. All right, I just heard I just heard some sort of liquid. And I just wanted to show CO Savvy and everybody who was here on the bluesy planorama. I drink it water today. I'm not drinking Coke. <laughs> No Coke. No Coke. I'm trying to be better. I'm also drinking my little uh, drink, but, but I'm not drinking Coke, and I feel like that. Look how gigantic this is, though. That's like a lot, that's a lot of water for one day. I'm to the, it has, and I'm to the keep chugging portion, <laughs> which is what I feel like I'm doing these days. Anyway. How'd everybody do? Pretty good. <laughs> I think I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the kind of incisive commentary that everybody's here for. That's I'll right. tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So pretty good. Tell me, would you care to tell us more about that? Pretty pretty good. Um, I think I've improved one opening. <laughs> and Excellent. Be written. Okay, that's good. Dalcy, so Bruno, how'd you do? Um, pretty well. I'm brainstorming before I make a move. <laughs> Classic doll. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm just like structuring how is this going to work? Once I yep. get the big picture structure, I can start structuring the pseudo scripts for each video. I'm not going to read the scripts because hello, blindness, but I will have an idea of what I'm talking about and I can have, have like a better wing it situation because I'm not really winging it. I would be like, okay, I already know what to say, kind of. I will just word it my own way. It doesn't have to be word by word. Perfect. All right. That's fantastic. Steven is twinning with me. I'm also working on the website today and I'm pretty sure that if we listen very carefully, we can hear Amy clapping and breathing <laughs> a sigh of relief because oh, I'm way, yeah. beh way behind on my notes for her. Michelle, how'd you do? Uh, pretty good. I'm still on the very first video of, uh, let's see, I think I have 12 lessons in this course. So Oof. it's going to take a while, but I'm sitting there. It is. It is. It's definitely good. All right. Let's, I think it's going to be awesome though. I think if anybody uh, can do a great job with this, it is it's going to be, be Michelle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. I feel like I missed a big chunk where people talked about how what they were working on. How did you guys all do? Steven working on website. I think I just put that back up. Mary Wimbley work. Oh, <laughs> not Mary Wimbley. There's Mary Wimbley. Not very productive this sprint, but most of it looking for a specific adhesive pen loop. All right. Five uh, stars to anybody who knows what a pen loop is. Okay. <laughs> Mary, you're going to have to fill, it, fill us in. There we go. Awesome. Fantastic. We're so glad you could make it. Very good. All right. Sky ate breakfast. I will confess I had a little breakfast too. I was trying to be like, I, I'm so I have like such a crazy day scheduled after this, and so I was sneak eating quiche. I will confess. Now I'm all done. Ooh, so like, quiche! Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It, I'm it's, hungry. It was pretty good. I'll, I'll say that. So uh, <laughs> Devin worked on playlists. Oh, right, because as you guys know, Devin every day does a playlist of. Um, of all of the streams that are happening for the day. So we I love, love that. Super, <laughs> super helpful. I'm so sorry I brought that up. Like it's like an hour, we still have an hour to go before. Yeah. Oh, it, was, dear. it was pretty good though. It was pretty good, I have to say. I'm, yeah, I don't know why I don't make it more often. I really do love quiche. I cheated this time though. Usually I make my own pie crust. And today, well, two days ago when I made it, I used a frozen pie crust. So. Still just as good. All yes. Right. All right. Okay, everybody. I feel like we, I, I uh, made some good progress, so I'm excited about that. Should we just go ahead and hop right into another sprint? I feel like we should. Yes. Yeah? Do, we have, do we have a topic for today? Or? We do have a topic for today. So, Robert, I feel like you should introduce it because you 
talking was what um, what was what made me think that we should talk about it. So before we started, Robert had just watched a video of Michelle's. You take it from here, buddy. <laughs> Michelle's videos that got me thinking about it in terms of traditional publishing and some of the pitfalls and aggravating uh, things that nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> aggravating nonsense, right? Aggravating that is an it. industry term. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I brought back some good old memories and uh, why I'm not traditionally publishing. But um, comic books were the same, except you don't own the characters and the property. So when you submit ideas to them, um, it could go almost anywhere, including completely out of your hands and into somebody else's, which sometimes happens. <laughs> Especially not, if it's that would a be good idea. Yeah, because yeah. The, the we love this. Idea. You're a genius. We're going to give it to somebody else. Uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I think that is such a good topic about sort of those differences between um, and the choices we make to publish traditionally or to publish independently. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's interesting that we have it's too bad Carol's not on for today because she has done. Um, a pretty nice job with uh, doing the whole hybrid thing. But yeah, like I was I was telling Michelle and uh, Robert and Dahl wasn't here yet, but I feel like I mentioned, I maybe dropped this like a couple weeks ago. I just got the rights back to my first uh, nonfiction book. Yes. And my first, right? And I know, right? I'm so excited. <laughs> I've only been trying for approximately a hundred years. So yeah. <laughs> So just got the rights back to my first nonfiction book and the and the rights back to my first novel, which I would like to update a little bit because it has exciting words like facts in it. So I would like to take that out. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I want to sort of update it a little bit, but I'm going to re-release it independently and sort of dip, even though this is a book that, you know, it, you know, it did pretty well. And um, I'm going to re-release it independently and i'm kind of excited about that i've been like trying and trying to get it back this so i can do that so i have had and i done like little indie tiny projects but this is the time where I, the first time i would ever try to do fiction and i'm on the fence because the new project that i'm working on my agent is excited about it i would theoretically normally send it off to her and have her shop it around to the publishers but there's a little part of me that thinks like, well, maybe I should just do this one all on my own. So Michelle, tell us about some of the pitfalls that you talked about <laughs> with traditional publishing. Um, do you have a couple hours? I know. I think, the, I think the worst is that like the best author is a dead author feeling that you have to I am very, I am very grateful for Michelle speaking mm -hmm. up for all of us who shouldn't speak up because as i'm as i'm querying i should not make such videos because if an agent looks me up and finds that out yeah they, they they're might not, be, they, yeah, might be, they might be concerned yeah they, they will be concerned they will not work with me and especially knowing from the go that I am a minority in every sense of the, mi the word minority, like all the aspects of a minority, I have them in one package. So I have a tough road ahead and I am very, very grateful for Michelle speaking up because okay. she mentions it in, in one of the latest videos that I saw, I shared it and everything, where, where she says this traditional publishing path is becoming so that only privileged people can That's true. publish it is That's true. And it sucks. yeah it really does suck right and it's not you don't have this experience anymore where a publisher is at least not very often you don't have the experience where a publisher can see that you're talented and is willing to like take you on for a couple of books to figure out if you find an audience. Like, right. you, you remember you remember my re my rejection letter. It was like I can see you're an accomplished writer. I can see you have talent. It's not what I want right now. <laughs> right? Yeah, yes, so we're not looking for talent. We're looking. Yeah, for a not, I, we're not looking for what you're doing. Sorry, bye. Another day. And I was yeah. like, okay. yeah, it's yeah, it's. I, it's 
I think that if you deal with any big company, corporation, their whole social strata is if you come across smart, they're leery because they don't want somebody who they think of as the talent knowing as mm. much more than they do because then they can't play the same games. If you're smart and you're, you're selling well, then that's another story, but you have to get to that point where you're selling well, I think. Right, right. This is well, this is why there is like a fuss about it, it. This is the same in the industry, in the music industry, for example. This is why there is a fuss about young authors, like very fresh out the boat authors, like inexperience, debut culture. This is why we have it because once you start gaining all the knowledge to fight back then you're like, why am I even traditional publishing? Like, if you have the money to self-pub, you go self-pub. Yeah. It's your own thing. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, there are, some benef there are some benefits to both for certain. You certainly have Definitely. access to some things through self-publishing mm -hmm. that you might otherwise not have. But it used to be that the big, you know, that publishers were really this big gatekeeper between you and the bookstores, and that is just not the case anymore. And especially now, after a lot of us spent, you know, the last year, especially a lot of people who read spent the last year of their lives locked in their houses and have learned that you can get your, you can still support your indie bookstore through Indie Bound or through Bookshop that you can get your stuff delivered from mm -hmm. Barnes and Nobles or, or Barnes and Noble or Amazon or wherever you want to. And they don't have the, I mean, Barnes and Noble is now actively courting independently published authors, which is, you know, like 20 years later than Amazon, yeah. but they're doing it. And that's what's important. Right. And so yeah, there's you don't have the same thing. Certainly there is a benefit to having like a really nice um, you know, having the cover done and having someone that knows what they're doing sort of to manage like the overall marketing of an early book, but to be honest, they never work as hard as you are going to work. And 99% of the promotional stuff is going to be you anyway. What yeah. is going on with my hair today? Um <laughs> I'm sorry, I put it in a ponytail and I apparently missed some spots and like some of the things, like, yeah, I'm sticking it down, right? There we go. All better. So, yeah, it, it's, there, there are lots of things. So, you guys, I want to hear, Morgan's here. Hey, Morgan. Hi, Morgan. So, what do you guys think about this? What is your feeling about the advantages oh. of publishing versus? I, I, versus? Versus independently publishing. There is a there is a prestige thing which you know is like the one. I don't even do it for the prestige. Yeah. Like I'm not that kind of person that wants all the fame and glory and money and I'm gonna be the next blah blah. No, I I hate that. I'm not doing it for that. The only and this is the thing. The only reason why I am going traditional is because I don't have the money or the eyesight. <laughs> me blind to do it professionally and high quality uh -huh. as an independent author if i had the money the eyesight i could i would go indie no problem i i, I could learn marketing i could network i could work on my thing i can i know i can but I don't have the money to pay a professional editor, to pay a cover designer, to pay for a marketing campaign because I would need a little bit of that. Right. So, yeah, I don't have the money for an audiobook, even though I would maybe narrate it myself and deal with it. Sorry. Maybe. But, you know, I don't have the money. If I had the money. By querying, I'll see you never. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, I would, I would not be doing what I'm doing. But I also see the advantage of traditional publishing. You could get it translated into different languages, and that is a very appealing to me because uh -huh. of all my multicultural representation in my stories. Uh -huh. it would be very nice to have it translated to languages that I cannot handle. Uh -huh. Would be great. Would be awesome. That is the only. Hmm, maybe that keeps me in the traditional path aside from the money. Uh -huh. But then, but then I also look at myself. I I am a woman. Mm -hmm. I'm biracial. Mm -hmm. I'm asexual. Mm -hmm. I'm blind. Okay. Uh, you see, I'm pagan. Okay. I'm not in the United States or Europe. Okay. You see, I have all the we don't want you 
checkbox checked and it is terrifying it, it's it's like what the heck am i doing here should i just open a pizza parlor and forget no I mean, no, no i know and, i know and, and i but, wouldn't like i don't think that all of those check boxes put you uh, in it in an i don't want you category um eva has a really good point here Agents can help in self-publishing as well with getting things translated and selling rights for various things. I was just going to say that. But Ooh. yes, money. Yeah, it's true. There, are those The publishers rarely sell their own. So, I mean, they have uh, reps, but a lot of publishers work with sub-rights agents that mm -hmm. are not connected. They're just independent, and they sell in certain regions. And mm -hmm. yeah, you, you don't necessarily have to be traditionally published, although... Again, like with some other um, you know, gatekeepers, they do make an mm -hmm. assumption about a quality of a book, depending on whether or not it's being traditionally published. Yeah. Uh, Eva says, uh, and those with money can't relate to literally not having those options. So Michelle said something interesting about if you don't have means, like publishing is sort of narrowing and is making itself traditional publishing is kind of making itself avail unavailable for people who don't have means. Tell me what you mean about that. I mean, it's it's been that way for a while. It just it's like it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Yeah. You know, like one one tiny. This is just one little example. Um, in the world of middle grade, where like a big a good marketing campaign would be um, would include your publisher sending you on a school visit tour because that's where you sell bulk copies by time. Right. Few authors get that treatment. Um, certain publishers like Scholastic, when they give authors these opportunities, they do not allow authors to charge for school visits. You essentially have to take two weeks off of your life and go work hard every day doing school visits for free. And yeah, you might sell some books, but like, who can do that? Who can take wow. two weeks off right. of their job, two weeks away from their family if they right. have kids? So, like that is a ton of resources and money you're talking about giving up right, right. to sell your books. And I don't think you're going to break even, even if you sell a lot of books, like who can do that? And not to mention all of the work it takes before a tour to develop a presentation that you're right. going to do. You know what I mean? Like it's crap like that. Like you can't literally forbid authors from, for charging money for work, right? <laughs> you know, for work that's related to their work. Yeah, well, and to do that, rich people. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the other thing is, a lot of times they have the expectation that if you don't have a really great platform already, so mm -hmm. if you don't already have a lot of marketing savvy, that mm -hmm. you will pay for an outside publicist, which can cost tens of thousands of dollars. This is so, another thing they yeah. say they don't look at your platform if you write fiction. <laughs> mm -hmm. Honey, they do. They do. They, they, I'm sorry, um, but they do. Yeah, they do. Of course they do. Uh, yeah, because they just like with nonfiction, they want to know that you're able to sell books. I think platform mm -hmm. is less of uh, it's less important if you have um, if you're if you're selling fiction, but it's not unimportant. It's mm -hmm. just not everything. It is, I mean, not everything. what what they tell you out in the open on their websites and on their bios and all that. What they say they want diversity because it's good PR. It is really bad PR to say they are not looking for diversity. We're just looking for rich white people. That's all we want. Yeah, yeah, that's all we want. Of course, they're not going to say that. It is very bad PR if they say that your platform do, uh, that does matter and they look at your following count. And it, it is really bad PR. So, of course, it is the like we have to understand it, this is also their job. So they have to keep it clean, keep it pretty, you know. Right. I mean, let's be realistic. They also well, try to do their best when it comes to marketing themselves as agents. Well, of course they do. But let's be fair here because minorities read books. Uh, ace people read books. Gay people read books. Hispanic people read books. Asian people read books. And they are tired of only having one kind of hero and only one kind of heroine or mm -hmm. one kind of main character in their books. And so there, it, there is a push within the industry to have there more There is diversity. a push. Yeah. But, the, it's, but, it's but this is bullshit. This, no, it's not all bullshit, but I, this is a great segue for what I'm about to say. It has a push. But it depends on the month. 
and the time and the trend. If you have a character who is disabled and LGBTQ community and it's Pride Month and you're queering, please forget the blind and do the queer. Like, it's the trend. Follow the trend. It, I'm sorry. I have all the minorities together. I see you don't what's have to, happening. <laughs> you, you, but here's, so what you're saying though, is mm -hmm. it, there is a little nugget of wonderful marketing advice in there. Mm -hmm. And that is just, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is when you are reaching out to readers, you mm -hmm. want to reach them when they are thinking about buying a book or when yeah. they're about to go on vacation, right? The same mm -hmm. thing is true for publishers during pride mm -hmm. month is when agents and publishers are thinking, gee, we don't have enough LGBTQ authors. Uh-oh. It's frozen. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Go, Here's a good one. Is oh, it me? Yeah. yeah, no, you froze oh, for a bit. Okay. So, oh, so, so there is something in marketing about sort of hitting them where they are. And so if they are thinking more about Pride Month, and more about representation and LBGQ, wait, <laughs> LGBTQ, sorry, I just got lost in my alphabet. There. Don't worry. Uh, right, that that there's, if they're thinking about it, that's a good time to, uh, to mm -hmm. hit them up. All right, you guys, I promised more sprints and we are going to do some, hold on, hold the phone, here we go. All right, everybody. Uh, Doll, do you want to take us on a quick pep talk before yes. we sprint? We need right. it after some grim conversation here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, if you feel like traditional publishing or just publishing in general is impossible, look, don't think like me. Forget the pizza parlor. Forget the cookie business. Forget about it. You're a writer. You're an artist. It is what you were meant to do. It will all, there will always be a way. So put your fingers on a keyboard because that's where you start your journey as a writer. Put fingers on keyboard, mind in story, and you get ready to sprint in three, two, 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 and one, and sprint. I have some fun when we return. <laughs> okay. We're here for it, Robert.
We can hear you. Now, can you hear me? Yes, now, now, yes. <laughs> the gremlins are a thing today. That was, I just didn't push the little button hard enough. I think we all know I'm technologically challenged here. <laughs> so everybody drink if you thought Lisa screws up the uh, stream yard, if you had that time to drink. Okay. Uh, Eva had a really good comment about what we were talking about before. Um, Co-author, pen name, they have an agent, use the agent to handle things. There's some videos on the Courtney Project channel. I think I've actually seen that. I think that's a fantastic video. You guys, let us know how you did on the sprint. Yes, Claude, I was totally muted. Um, and Mord is here. Hello. Ta -da. So before we talk about the drawbacks as to traditional publishing versus indie publishing. And right before we left, Robert said, I have a thought. So yes. what was it? I have several thoughts. He's like, oh man, I forgot. Previously discussing. Um, one is um, what Dal was saying about the, the trends, but it's not only trends, but from publisher to publisher or agent to agent, um, they're gonna have different tastes anyway. So you're gonna have to- Absolutely query to, you know, maybe LGBTQ for one agent to something else for another, whatever they happen to be looking for. Mm -hmm. so always going to be a, a morphing scenario. But also, as I believe I've mentioned before, there is um, crowdfunding, which gives you an advance to afford self-publishing. And crowdfunding is all about marketing and just getting the word out there, which Dal is really brushing up on. So it's it's sort of like an arrow pointing in a direction that says, hey, I'm already good at this. Why not see if I can gather some funds? Plus about $1,500 or so to put out a book and do all those things that, you know, from cover artists to editing. Mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. It's a possibility. That's I to gather if you have a decent enough following and everybody's contributing even a small amount. Right. You can get that pretty easy. I, I actually think this is a really fantastic idea and a lot of authors are doing this. And I think for you, Doll, all those things that you feel are negatives, like, oh, I'm LGBT, TQ. I don't know why I can't say that today. I can say it any other day. Uh, <laughs> or I'm blind or this, like, instead of those things being negatives, that just gives you an entree into more, uh, into more groups, right? Mm. I think that that, that is an additive rather than, uh, you know, than a negative. So yeah. Mm. Word, yeah. What agents and publishers are often looking for within their own little stable is not exactly what the audience is. Right, right. Well, and the other thing too about crowdfunding is that like it also has the added advantage of the A, all these people are invested in your success. B, one of the things that you usually give people who have crowdfunded you is like early access to the thing. And so they get to see your, they get your book or a free copy of your book well, it's not free because they've funded you, but they get a copy of your book. And so then you are releasing a book to a bunch of people that feel invested in your success because they have put their money on the line because mm -hmm. they believe in you. They believe and, in you. Yeah. and you have a bunch of reviews already banked because again, they're invested in your success. So you can say, mm -hmm. this will really help this make this a thing. And it, yeah, I mean, Definitely. I think this is a fantastic idea. All right, I, we have some uh, folks who have been working while we've been doing this. Let's mm -hmm. see what they were doing. Steven did more work on his website. Good Amazing. job. That's what I was doing too. I um, I didn't get very far, but I did work on it. So that's I good. I spent 20 minutes trying to take a good picture. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes this happens. Yeah. Yeah. Eva, sometimes I spend 20 minutes trying to write a good sentence. <laughs> Eva is up 5,200 words for the Woo! day. Holy smokes. I haven't written this much at a time in Wonderful. a long time. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you. That is phenomenal. Claude says, just Eva, very nice. Yes, like, that is really phenomenal. Ooh, Celia Savvy. 
if you're going the traditional route, is getting an agent mandatory? Can an unknown writer submit directly to a trad publisher? Not a silly question, not too familiar with traditional publishing. No silly questions here. Yeah. No silly so, questions here. So That's the, a great question. It is a great question. And the answer is 99.99999% of the time, no. You cannot submit directly to a publisher. They used In, to have this in yes. the english market i should right. say right yes in the us market specifically us is canada and uk australia perhaps so the english speaking market it is a no most of the time sometimes there are publishers like uh, for example uh, daw not not my name daw d a w oh, this, yeah. this was looking for the looking for new sci-fi authors even if they were unagented but it's not recommended because once again they could use you. You need an agent to 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 be your sort of lawyer to advocate for you right. for your story. So well, right. this is why it's make not a good idea. Yeah. Well, so here's the thing though, with Doll, which is an imprint of uh, Penguin, was doing was running sort of a special promotion to try to get this type of author and this type of book for their list because I think they're starting a new imprint, as I mm -hmm. recall. Something yep. under Doll or they're kind of returning to their original They're group. returning, yes. Yeah. And so what but what Doll said is that having somebody to look over the contract. Now that said, if you already have a book deal in hand, like you know, Doll Penguin is like, hey, we would like to publish this book. You can just run that right over to an agent and say, hey, I have a deal. Could you please do the contract? And they will be happy to do that for you for a cut of your stuff. Yes. But then you have solved your agenting problem. Mm -hmm. But publishers used to have more staff who could go through the slush file and dig for gold. And now that responsibility and honor or you know, terrible chore, depending on who it is that's reading and what you're looking at, falls now to the agents. And mm -hmm. so they do that job and the publishers really count on the agents as, you know, as sort of the first look for yeah. um, for any book. So There's another factoid as far as the uh, publishers getting fewer and fewer, Penguin Random House, since they have a good reputation with Disney, has now acquired all the publishing with Marvel Comics. So yeah. they are becoming like a monopoly, which is yeah. harder for everybody because the publishing gods are now going to be, you know, the publishing god. <laughs> right. Well, that's it. And Penguin <laughs> is really good at acquiring a lot of other houses. I mean, there used to be dozens and dozens of houses. And then for a long time, they were the big six. And then they ate random house. And then they're the big five. And now we're to the big four. So... Uh, and the big one keeps getting bigger for sure. There are some like mid-sized and smaller publishers that will look at un unagented manuscripts. Sometimes you have to have a recommendation from a current author or from a lit agent, but or you do like a pitch fest with them, especially mid-sized publishers will often do that at like a conference. But with the big five, it's really they just don't do it unless like uh doll was mentioning with the doll penguin uh outreach for science fiction authors mm -hmm. that was a really really good question Ooh, Definitely. eva says short fiction more likely to find publication that accepts unagented pieces that's very good yeah penguin, if you're writing short yeah. stories there are a bunch of anthologies that you could take part in mm -hmm. yeah. of course uh, I think if they read a piece, they'd hand it to an agent like we like this. Uh, CO Savvy says, Michelle's video on querying an agent kept appearing in my recommendations, even though I've seen it already. That's a sign I should get an agent. Why don't you love it when the universe just shines down on you like that? <laughs> All right. Uh, querying tips from an agent. Very good. Oh, this is a good question. Did anyone do Pit Mad? For those of you guys who are not super familiar, this uh, I was is an throwing opportunity. in the towel this time. Yeah. You can pitch to agents during a certain uh, time on mm -hmm. social media. And if they like on Twitter, your, on Twitter, it's a, it's a Twitter specific thing. And if you like, uh, if they like what they see with your, you know, 140 character pitch or 280 character pitch, then they'll ask to see more. 
Sia Savvy says, even if the publishing houses get down to only two, we know the big two always be poo. <laughs> and with that, oh, we only have 10 more minutes. We don't have time for another sprint. I was all excited. I thought I had a good transition that we were going to go right into sprinting. Yeah, when it comes to Pitmat, though, I, I tried a couple of times. I saw that the crowd was very YA oriented and I was yeah. like mm, um, I'm writing adult what am I doing here bye and I just threw in the towel like I'm okay and this is not my contest but um, networking with some other authors that take part in pitch contest on Twitter Mm -hmm. And maybe I will also go through a rebranding or relabeling of my sci-fi. It is still a sci-fi, but once again, marketing is what it is. And I might say in my query letters that it's a paranormal instead of a sci-fi. Because if I got paid every time I mm -hmm. heard someone say, well... I don't read sci-fi really, but but your book sounds intriguing. I would like to read it, and I'm like, mm -hmm, okay, you're not my audience. It's like sci-fi is a turnoff. It seems to be a turnoff because everyone I encounter is like, I usually don't read sci-fi. So maybe if I label it as a paranormal, maybe the agents who also think this way would reconsider. Uh -huh. we, we will see about that it is still a sci-fi it, it, it still has a lot of science fiction elements but hey it's a paranormal it's a blend of the two so if you don't like one i'm gonna switch to the other and see if that hits well better. you know what maybe do that if it's a blend of the two and it definitely getting, is a blend of the two then you're and you're getting pushback on sci-fi then yeah see if it falls but i don't know if there are rules for paranormal like there are for romance right the romance readers if, have if a it's checklist a they do, you cannot deviate if it's a paranormal romance and this is i'm asking around because I don't know if paranormal solo without the romance part exists. I don't I'm know sure, if I I'm don't. Sure it must. It must. It right? I, no, but as a bookshelf category, like in books. Well, I don't think. Yeah, I think they would just shelve it with regular paranormal. I don't think. I don't think they'll say paranormal without the romance. I think they mm -hmm. would just. I think they just shelve it. I don't know though. Is that who know who reads a ton of paranormal? Is that an expectation that if it's a paranormal book, there has to be a romance? Let's find yeah, please, out. no, because there's no romance here. So I'm like, should I'm I make that move? I'm finding it hard to digest the, the fact that people are saying, you know, they don't read science fiction or science fiction isn't selling. I mean, it's... it's I, I, I would get rich if I, if I like, seriously, I, I could do my crowdfunding if I got paid every time I heard or read <laughs> someone telling me that. It's like, I usually don't read sci-fi. I usually don't read sci-fi. I usually, I, I'm, I'm so expecting it now. Every time I meet someone new, it's like, well, I usually don't read. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, <laughs> you, know you know what is one thing that is a really um, effective strategy in a pitch letter is yeah. to, or just a pitch in general, is to use popular television or pop yeah. popular television shows or movies. And sci-fi is kind of making a comeback. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on TV right now mm -hmm. that is getting big viewership. And that's a really fast, we could say, my book is this meets this. And yeah. that's a really quick way to show a, there is an audience for this, and you might mm -hmm. like it even if you think you don't like sci-fi. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I am reconsidering a lot of labeling <coughs> stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it, it is all about marketing now. I, I know I can publish this. I know it's a likable story. I know I can make it better than it is. I know all those things. Now the thing is how to convince the gatekeepers that, hey, check this out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So Stephen Whelan says he's actually written a blend of sci-fi and paranormal as Stephen well. Stephen and I should be besties. Seriously. <laughs> All right. It's on. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Jeannie Marcella says, I think in Pitman only agents should like the post. Yes, that is how it's supposed yes, to work. Yes, that's how it works. Um, fellow authors retweet your pitches. Yes. Yes, exactly. 
Uh, Jeannie Marcella says yes, I'm correct. Okay, so that's where we are. Well, we are at 1254. I do like that JC says you can go over just this, just a little, just this one little time. I normally would, but I actually have to run out the door the second we are out. You guys know me, I'm terrible with time, mm. but I really have to go. All right, ooh, CO Savvy has an excellent idea. You never know, doll, you could create your own genre of doll fiction. <laughs> That's a great idea, but as a debut author, I have to fit in somewhere. It'd be like Björk. I know, be like Björk. Be she, like Björk, right? Björk is her own thing. She really is her own. She became her own thing. But her debut album is very much 90s pop. So you, you got to fit in somewhere first, and then you move on and do whatever you want. But that's a great well, idea. There, yeah, there are so many... There are so many books that readers just have to have a way to sort of like, what is it like? What mm. they have to have, and booksellers and publishers have to just have a way to categorize it, kind of in their brains to figure out what it's going to be like before they want it, before they know if they're interested. So, you guys are awesome. Thank you for being here for our last. Uh oh. We oh, no. are moving to maze. Time, same time slot, not, no, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time on Mondays, starting next week on June 14th, which I believe is Monday. If it's not, it's the closest Monday to that number. Uh, all right, before we go, uh, Lisa's frozen with emotion. Again, <laughs> God, you guys, I'm like, I don't know what's happening. Sky says, right. thanks, for, thanks for streaming. Oh, JC. Oh, no. We we love you, too. I will say Wednesday's like a good day. If I ever do pop-up streams, they'll probably be on Wednesdays. Because I'm trying to do a lot of writing this summer. That's my, yeah. one, of my, one of my goals. Lots of pop-ups. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm so sad, JC. Okay, I'm just gonna hope that something happens magically with your schedule where all of a sudden you are available again on Mondays. In case you can't, well, there is still Caro on Wednesdays. That's right, that's right. That's true, very true. All right, definitely, we love you guys. You are awesome. I should do an outro before we go, right? Let's start with Michelle and go around. Tell us who you are before we go, everybody. All right, guys, I'm Michelle Schusterman. I'm a young adult and middle grade author, and my channel is Traditional Publishing Chat, Writing Workshops, and Writing Blogs. <laughs> Excellent. Check them out. Uh, Michelle has phenomenal, phenomenal videos. You guys definitely do not definitely. want to miss that. I'm sure you're all already subscribed to Michelle, Robert, and Doll, but just in case you're not, now is a great opportunity to do that. <laughs> Doll, would you like to do your little outro? Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me today. I'm Del Cecil Reno. I'm a partially blind author, also known as the Ace from Space. I write primarily paranormal. <laughs> this is weird. Sci fi. <laughs> <laughs> and you write stories in multiple genres and a little bit of poetry. I will come back to my YouTube channel with an Instagram for authors and all about your branding and how to do your own branding thing. So stay tuned for that at some point this summer. If you want to check out all the stuff that I'm doing today in the here and now, you can follow me on Instagram at Elsie Silverno or any other social media. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You guys are awesome. Robert, let's hear your outro. I am the story detective. <laughs> <laughs> My channel takes all things story oriented and puts it under a Sherlockian microscope, breaks down the craft, and gives it to the audience to make their craft journey a little bit easier. I also do tech reviews. And in conclusion, I can't understand why the why a fantasy group isn't reading science fiction because you're just replacing magic with science. And without right. science, there's no magic because magic is physics. Get real, people. <laughs> Get real, people. With that word of wisdom, we are out of here. I'm Lisa Daly. Thank you so much for being here today. We will hopefully see all of you on Monday. And JC, we're just going to have to find another place to hook up. All right? Maybe it's on Caro's stream first thing in the morning. I'll see you around. All right. Bye, guys. We love bye, you. Bye, everyone. See you next week. Bye-bye.